who you really thought might make it. So those are issues that have to be uh, looked into. And in Haiti, the Order of Malta's hospital apparently had one ventilator, and it had a chronic patient uh, on that. So they had to make decisions as to what do you do when you had all these other people uh, coming in, and how did you decide doing that? Uh, evacuation issues uh, come up, and I mentioned the problems that occurred in Katrina, so you need plans about that. Informing patients and their family is a key issue, and I think the isolation that occurred in SARS and the difficulty of people uh, speaking, uh, patients speaking to their families was a problem. And if you're in a long-term uh, long care facility, then if you've got to evacuate, you have people who's, uh, with physical and cognitive disabilities which are going to make that much more difficult. And if you are moving, then you need to take their medications with them because a lot of people with chronic diseases, they're very dependent on the, their medications. And of course, there's all question of interrupted uh, treatments uh, and uh, the risk of infections. And we know we have problems already uh, with the question in our hospitals with the C. difficile and MRSA and things of that nature. So uh, a major upset in the usual normal way of doing things uh, tends to open the doors for more infections which will cause uh, problems. In, a, in the United States they have a lot more experience of dealing with disasters because they have more of them and certainly in Florida and places like that they're very uh, well aware of hurricanes and things of that nature. And they're, uh, Administration of Aging has an officer looking after uh, disasters, and that's difficult to write that disaster aging officer. He's not an aging officer, he's an officer in, disaster, in charge of disaster aging. They provide guidance, and they also have developed a quick response team of trained seniors, and I think that is one aspect of taking uh, advantage of the resources that the seniors themselves uh, can uh, provide. Uh, now, the Public Health Agency of Canada has been very uh, involved in this, and indeed I serve on one of their uh, working groups looking at emergency preparedness in seniors, and uh, they have uh, a lot of information available uh, about this. Uh, I think that there's one thing that Sean didn't mention actually was that uh, talking about the camp prep, one area that we were interested in recently, and Sean has uh, undertaken some work about that, was the faith-based response uh, to uh, emergencies. And uh, maybe in the discussion, Sean can talk a little further about uh, what's happening in there. So in, in conclusion, Emergencies and disasters are becoming more frequent, and the elderly have the highest morbidity and mortality. Uh, the frail elderly are a special needs group, and that's going to be the group that has particularly this mortality and morbidity. And their needs uh, need to be uh, included in emergency preparedness and planning. And from an ethical point of view, I think we have to discuss you know, at, at the very least, they should have the same sort of access uh, to people. But uh, should the various triage, should the various criteria that are developed for access to specialized equipment, should age figure into that at all? And that's uh, uh, something I think uh, requires ongoing debate. Thank you very much, and I think uh, now we'll be getting into the discussion. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Rory, as usual. So our challenge is always to, to help them find what their legacy is, because they may not have uh, you know, built a, a, a tower.